Okay. So talking about EOS, which in terms of, of cloud technology is a relatively new um, project. Um, it's still in a very de de uh, developmental stage at the moment, um, but it's quite a fascinating project as well. So whereas when I spoke with um, Overt in the context of open source cloud computing, competing against commercial closed products, um, for this presentation I'm going to talk about how you can take your virtualization environments um, and cloud environments to the next level using ELIS. So, a bit about ELIS, it's an infrastructure service cloud management application. Um, it has a few main functions. It provides hybrid cloud management, so you can connect your private clouds um, and virtualization environments such as Overt, Rev, VMware, um, and currently in development OpenStack. And it can also connect to public cloud providers such as Amazon EC2. Um, you can create virtual machine images based upon user-defined templates and push them out to your cloud providers, and then collection, uh, create collections of virtual machine instances based on one or many uh, pushed images. And then you can perform post-boot configuration um, on the virtual machines themselves and monitor their life, their life cycles. Um, so the current components of ELIS um, include these five components. So this is the current the current components. Um, so Delta Cloud API, um, Delta Cloud is basically the foundation for ELIS. It uses a RESTful API that abstracts and manages resources from various cloud providers. Um, so you've got support for, I can't remember exactly how many, but I mean to give you an example, there's EC2, Overt, and Rev, um, vSphere, OpenStack, um, Rackspace, Eucalyptus, and others, Rimu Hosting. Um, then you've got Oz, which builds base images from XML template descriptions. So the XML files define things such as the uh, image OS type, installation media where it's located, additional packages that you might need for your base images, um, and any additional commands or files to configure um, your image when you create it. Then you've got Image Factory, which builds images for your cloud providers. So Image Factory takes the base image from Oz and splits that up into several different uh, several sub-images for various cloud providers, so provider-specific images. Um, you've got Conductor, which is a high-level front-end for ALIS, so it uses uh, Web UI to control the cloud, pro uh, cloud providers, the hardware profiles, um, the clusters for them, um, and images and instances. And then you've got Audrey, uh, Audrey which facilitates cross-cloud configurations and provides post-boot configuration. Um, and currently in development, we've got Tim, which is a subcomponent within Conductor, which replaces our current image uh, warehouse daemon. So it re it's a Ruby, it's a Rails engine responsible for cloud image management. Um, and it allows clients to create and delete and upload images to multiple cloud providers. Um, Tim builds on top of Image Factory's cloud abstraction layer and provides metadata, versioning, and access controls for images. Uh, then you've got Heat, which is actually an OpenStack project. Um, but we're looking at integrating it into ELIS as well. Um, so it provides a programmable interface to orchestrate multiple cloud applications, um, implementing well-known standards such as CloudFormations and Tosca. Then you've got Snap. Um, this is still very early development, but it's an in-instance cloud configuration utility, which allows the end user to take a snapshot of an instance running on the cloud um, and restore the instance running on another cloud provider. So. Currently, Snap provides are PM-based, uh, Debian-based, and Windows-based um, guests. And then you've got Winged Monkey, um, a self-service portal for non-administrative users, so that's in development as well. So a very simple process. So uh, step one, you add your cloud providers. So you might have an EC2 um, provider. You might have an Overt setup. You might have an OpenStack setup. And it's just a matter of entering access details to um, ELIS there. Then you define templates for your images. So this is an example of a template def uh, definition file. So it's a little out of date, Fedora 16, but it sort of gives you an idea of what's involved here. So this basically is a Fedora 16 base image um, that automatically upstate, uh, updates upon creation. Then you build and push um, your template, you build it into an image and then push it out to your cloud provider. And this is the UI for the 
um, build and push part for your images. Um, then you can create a deployment. Um, so a deployment is essentially several instances together working as an application. So um, you might define, say, a, a simple web host and database server pair. Um, so you're able to do that by, say, using base images or, say, one image or if you've got a specific image for, for one set of instances or another. So this is uh, an example deployment file which contains um, four instances based upon two images. So as you can see the, here, the first two are based on the, the first image and the last two are based on the second image. Um, and this provides some information um, about the actual deployments. So to launch instances, as you saw here, it's just a matter of pressing that launch button. Um, there's some defined information that you have to confirm there. And as I sort of spoke before with that um, template for deployables, it splits, or not splits, but it, it creates instances based upon um, original images. So you can create several different instances based upon the one image. And then you can provide post boot configuration as well. So this is another deployment XML file, um, which shows two instances um, with cross configuration there. So as you can see, um, it allows you to um, input parameters there, plus also take parameters from other hosts as well, from other instances. Um, so you can take information um, and you can also implement factor-based um, information from your host. So for example, your host IP or your host name. Uh, this is an example of a WordPress um, deployment um, being created. So basically as an application, um, you define, this here is the, the HTTP, so um, you define, say for example, uh, launching a web WordPress blog, you define your name and your username and password. Um, and it also takes several details from the uh, other instance, which is a MySQL host. So use cases, so to give you an example of two use cases, where say for example an organisation has a complex application deployment, um, in the past you'd have to provide a series of instructions um, to configure say several number of services, um, whereas with ELIS you can, uh, an organisation can define all services within their image um, template files and their deployment template files and just hand them to whoever's interested. Um, another example, so application replication. So organizations can replicate applications from one provider to another for specific purposes. So uh, an example I like to bring up is a university where peak times are always registration periods. So it creates an overload for the servers. And in my experience, I don't know if it's changed now when you've got a heap of people um, during that, that early registration period. It, it basically, there's downtime. The, the, <coughs> service crash, what you can do is you can take that application, migrate it to, uh, say for example, EC2, um, and have that running in the, the um, in a public cloud, um, which frees up your private cloud architecture. So the benefits, it's provider agnostic. Oh. What's that? Okay, I'll speed this up. Um, so benefits, provider agnostic. Uh, we've got one base image for multiple instances, quick deployment of instances. Um, you've got app forms, basically those collection um, of instances together as a sin single entity. So basically you can say, I want to launch um, this application, I want to launch WordPress blog, a Drupal site, I want to launch um, Salesforce instance. Um, you've got automatic configuration of instances as well because of the, the deployment files and the, the image files as well. It basically does that all automatically. Uh, there's REST API access as well for, for ELIS. Um, future features include, you've got self-service, as I mentioned, Winged Monkey, and also a cost engine to calculate costs associated with um, public clouds. Um, we've got the main website there. I'll put these slides up on the wiki. Um, so you, there's pages on how to get it, how to use it. Um, you can also compile from source, so sources on GitHub. Uh, plus, we've got an older version on the official Fedora repositories. Um, so as I said, 
um, it acts as a central management unit for all cloud resources, regardless of provider, and provides you with a means to deploy complex applications quickly and efficiently. Um, the best part is it's free and open source. So and these are the things why I believe ELIS is a great example of how open source software can take cloud infrastructure uh, to the next level. Thank you very much for attending my presentations.